This is a production of Cornell University. We have a, a special presentation by our, um, one of our panelists. Um, Roald Hoffman is a uh, Nobel Prize winner, poet, chemist. Um, it seems he's traveled um, far between the sciences and the arts. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce Roald Hoffman, and the title of his PowerPoint presentation is The Chemical Imagination at Work in Very Tight Places. Uh, thank you, Susie. I'm very glad to be here. What I thought that I'd uh, like to do is to show you uh, an example of what uh, a reasonable, if not good, presentation might be. And so I want to tell you something. Um, what did I say I was going to talk about, Susie? Uh, um, oh, yes, it's something about high pressure. Yes. Um, well, if I can have the first slide here. Let me see if I can work this out. Nothing's happening. Um, I see some young people in the audience. Uh, could I have your help, please? Uh, yeah. uh, okay, yeah. okay. Thank you. So, uh, what I want to tell you is something about the landscape of things at high pressure. At high pressure, incredible things happen, just. Things, for instance, that uh, substances like xenon, a gas normally, under high pressure becomes a high melting solid and eventually turns metallic. A ionic substances such as cesium iodide, sodium telluride, maybe not salt, sodium chloride, also turn metallic. And molecules which we normally think of as just stable molecules, a gas like carbon dioxide or nitrogen, some of the most stable things, turn at high pressure in a kind of molecular alchemy into uh, solids like quartz and phosphorus. Uh, something went wrong with my chem drugs, excuse me. Uh, I should have drawn it this way. <laughs> uh, this is carbon dioxide. You see he's this kind of involuted multiple bonding, two double bonds here. But with high pressure, this is what I didn't draw right, links up with this guy and links up with this guy. <laughs> Carbon becomes tetrahedral. <laughs> okay, now, as we, as we go on, I incredible th further things happen. And in fact, I'd like, uh, one of the things we'd like to do with work together with Neil Ashcroft, he had the idea of chemical precompression. The idea was that Hydrogens, we'd like to make hydrogen metallic. Hydrogen is in the interior of every planet. It is the most abundant element in the universe. And it is un exposed to incredible pressures in there and probably is metallic and superconducting. And we'd like to simulate this in the laboratory. It's easy enough to do in a computer. Um, oh, I forgot to say something. Could we go back one slide, please? Um, yes, I forgot to tell you that our aim is to make hydrogen metallic. And we will do this by squeezing it together in the presence of other elements, such as silicon, germanium, tin, and lead. And then we will have the hydrogens bonded to the germanium and tin, and then they will be more likely, they'll get closer to each other, and they'll get more likely to bond with each other. 
in general, as a result of this work, we've come up with a hierarchy of responses in, in to pressure in crystals. And I can make it in four points. The first thing that happens when you squeeze molecules is you penetrate the repulsive region of intermolecular potentials <laughs> and squeeze out so-called van der Waals space. And the next thing that happens after you have squeezed out that space which is easy, the second thing is you, in order to get closer together, you have to increase the coordination of the various metals that are involved of, and the main group elements. So they have to form more bonds. If they only had, this is what happened in carbon dioxide, and they only had two bonds with each other, now they have to form four bonds with each other. It's just like sardines in a can. Um, the next thing after that is you have to decrease the length of covalent bonds and also the size of onions. Uh, I'm sorry, anions. Um, <laughs> the the uh, final thing that happens is an entirely new world in which the chemical intuition is not going to work. A new world of electrons moving off their, off their atoms new modes of correlation, things that the Marquis de Sade could not imagine. Uh, and now I come to the conclusion for my talk. Uh, the main thing to do while looking at materials under high pressure is just to have fun and get close together. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks so much for uh, laughing with us with that. Um, <laughs> I'd like to uh, introduce um, Joe Fish K and uh, Holly Adams, who are joining me, and also, uh, last but not least, Dr. Roald Hoffman. Uh, <laughs> Uh, my name is Max Ebgen. I'm the executive director of Redshift Productions. And uh, what you just saw was um, a game uh, that was actually completely improvisational, or, or mostly improvisational. We did on Friday discuss with Dr. Hoffman the content of what he would be discussing, but the actual performance that you saw was improvised. Um, it, this was developed from, uh, as part of a show that we um, uh, produced in New York City. Um, that was developed with improv artists. Um, and this is the kind of thing that uh, we at Redshift do. We create um, uh, performances as scientific outreach. And we also do um, training and assessment and creation of outreach activities. Um, so if you have any uh, questions about what we do or about what you just saw, I'll be wandering around here and you can uh, ask me any questions you like. Uh, thanks again. Uh, thank you very much to Joe Fish and Holly and definitely Dr. Old Hoffman.